unfortunately did not get the shading of our main lesson angel, the shading of her face on camera. That was my camera mishap. And so I wanted to show you, I already kind of felt too committed to where we had gone with our main lesson um, rose halo angel and did not want to start over because I really liked the story that we had in her wing. I really liked where we had gone with her. And so um, I did want to show you though, um, it wasn't in a whole lot of detail or depth. I shade fairly quickly, uh, especially on our main lesson angel because there's so much depth in her wings. I don't tend to then shade too dramatically the face um, versus if I have a lighter um, a lighter presentation around the face, I might go with a little bit more of a dramatic shading. It's just I didn't want it to get too dark. And so I kept the shading of her face um, somewhat subtle. Um, and so I wanted to show you though what I did versus just having um, the lesson pop back up with her face already completed. And so I quickly drew um, an additional face and as I tend to do, got a little carried away. And so didn't, you know, I'm looking at the face, I'm like, oh, well, her hair is kind of plain. And so I um, ended up doing some roses in her hair. Again, I thought it would be great because it kind of goes along with our theme. It shows you a different application of how you can play with those roses and um, implement them elsewhere in other areas and, um, and and so these again are the exact same roses that we used as her halo um, and the same roses that I show you in that little bonus video of, of the rose. And so I am going to shade um, this young lady. I'm going to shade her face um, up until the point where I get to her cheeks and then I'm going to switch back. So I apologize for the distraction of going back and forth, but that way you'll have all of the steps that I did um, and not miss anything. And I thought that that was important. And so once I get to the point where I'm doing her cheeks, um, I will pause the camera and I will bring back um, our main lesson, uh, um, Angel, and we will go from there and continue and finish up with our main lesson, Angel. And so I have on my palette, i um, taken some sepia brown, a little bit of gold, and really have watered it down pretty dramatically for um, this first layer because really what we want to try and build um, is some depth to her face um, by playing with highlight and shadow and so uh, I tend to go it's it depends if I'm if I'm using acrylic I tend to go from dark to light when I'm using watercolor I prefer to go from light to dark to be able to um, add my layers and do my blending so the first thing that I'm going to do is again just take this light neutral tan and begin to work with her skin to get some paint on the paper so that I can get some wetness to be able to begin to layer in some additional shading and so I will leave some areas without any paint at all so that I can have I can build in my highlight. If I end up thinking or feeling as if, and I need to figure out how I'm going to define her mouth here since I've only given her that little bottom part. Not that I can't go over it later. Um, but I am gonna leave some spaces that really are, are void of color. I'm not gonna put any color on them. I may go over them a little bit later, but then it does give me the option of um, leaving that as a highlight across the bridge of the nose and I tend to do a little bit up here in the eye. And so if you think about what areas of the face tend to be highlighted or would be lighter than um, the balance of the face, think of those things that if you didn't put sunscreen on or for those of us who <laughs> are freckled, heavily freckled, even if you did put sunscreen on, think of those areas that protrude a little bit that are probably going to be the first ones that you get sunburnt on. And those are probably going to be the areas of the face, like the brown bo the brow bone and, and the bridge of the nose and the ball of the nose, her cheekbones, um, maybe a little bit of our chin. Those are going to be the areas that are going to have the most light reflection to them. So it would be areas that you would want to keep 
um, lighter. Um, you don't want them too dramatically light, although sometimes that makes a great statement as well. Um, but you also don't want it to be a distraction. And then if you think about the areas that, on your face anyway, that you would normally try to lighten up with concealer, um, those are the areas where we're going to add shadows. So around the eye, around the bridge of the nose to be able to give the nose a little bit of depth, a little bit underneath her lip. Um, um, unless the hair is up, and even sometimes when the hair is up, we'll probably add some deeper shading along where her hair is naturally falling against her face. I'm going to zoom in a little here for you. Um, and so those would be darker. Underneath her chin, obviously our chins cast a shadow on our neck. Um, she's got a beautiful swan neck. I love that. I love long necks. Um, I exaggerate that. I know that's not news. Um, but um, those are the areas that are going to have a little bit of depth to them. And so I am still taking that exact same um, mix that I had. I'm just adding a little bit more sepia to it. And um, again, a little bit of sepia, a little bit of gold, and a lot of water. Um, my palette had a little bit of that neutral gray in there, which is fine because we're going to pull in some of that neutral gray anyway. But then I'm going to, um, now I have a little bit, again, a little bit um, more dramatic, the, the most dramatic increases the sepia. And I'm just going to kind of begin to build, don't forget her ears, I normally do. Kind of more dramatically build. The contours of her face. Underneath the chin. Tends to be where her hair her hair might have go a little bit over. And see how I have kind of a very defined line here? I just rinsed my brush and I kind of feather in that line so it becomes a little less dramatic because um, once that dries the line is a little obviously distracting and so I'm going to continue just to keep adding just a little bit more sepia because that's my darker color and then I can begin to drop it in And again, I don't want these dramatic transitions. Try to soften those transitions because you can make as many layers as you need to. You want to be careful that you're not adding too much water because I can already see that my paper is bubbling up, which is why, again, that we tape it along the edges. It stretches and then as it dries, it dries again flat. Um, but you will have ripples um, in your painting if you don't have it, if you don't have a tape down. And so if you find that you're getting, because we are going over the same areas multiple times, if you find that you're getting um, these kind of dips or valleys, um, you can either, if you have a heat gun, you can, you can use a little bit of your heat gun to help um, the drying process go a little bit faster. Or you can, you can gently tap it, but that is obviously going to remove a little bit of your shading. But the reason why it's kind of important either to wait a little bit um, or support the drying process in another way other than just letting it naturally dry is because when we then go to do her cheeks, you don't want those valleys where the color is going to settle and become um, difficult to work with. And so I... Um, I think she's okay for now. I'm going to transition over to my neutral, my neutral gray, and I'm going to begin to shade the side of her nose and underneath her eye, along the top and along the bottom. Again, watching where my line might be too dramatic of a line. And you can see that I'm going underneath the nose. So obviously the nose casts a little bit of a shadow. Underneath her lip. And I always try to go a little bit um, softer because it's so much easier, as you know, to add more than to try and take away. And unlike when I'm working with acrylics, I can't just easily paint over something that I don't like. 
So again, this is just the neutral tint that I'm taking underneath her chin. I don't again want that line, so I'm going to feather it out with just some water. Continue to feather it out. I mean that you have to add more, but that's fine. That's we're good with that. Still just using my neutral tint coming around here where I know because of her hair, gonna cast a little bit of a shadow. Up along in here where her part is and her hair swoops down. We have a little bit of a shadow. If I get some color up into the roses at the, or her hair, that doesn't, it's not a big deal. You can either just blot it out with your paper towel or let it be. Keep layering this in until you like the depth that it has. You want to leave the forehead a little bit of a lighter value. That also is an area that tends to reflect more light. And now I'm taking that neutral tint and adding it to my sepia mix. And then I'm going to stop and I'm going to look at her and see what she needs. And I don't worry too much if my shading goes into her um, eyes. Um, I, I um, will show you when we go back to the main lesson when we do our angel's eyes that I will um, actually switch over to an acrylic in order to get a nice white uh, on the eye. So we're going to we're gonna cover that anyway. I tried to not have too much over there so that's that's not too big of an issue but I, I just kind of look back and I, 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 I take a step back and I look and see am I okay with something? Does something not look right? And when I look at um, the bridge of her nose and the highlight on the bridge of her nose it's kind of a little bit dramatic. It almost maybe looks a little bit like a runway um, and I don't think she's got that kind of nose that could launch a plane. So I am just rinsing out my brush completely. I only have water in my brush and I'm just going to take it down a little bit and see if I can mellow that out a little bit. Now if you mellow it out too much and then you lost some of the definition that you really liked, just apply more layers of the darker color and that, I mean that's you, it's, it's kind of a, a, a adding then mellowing it and determining whether you want to add more. And so I am going actually at this point to a smaller brush. The smaller brush again, remember, holds less water. So the color tends to be a little bit more, depending upon how you load your brush, tends to be a little bit more um, intense, a little bit deeper. And I'm just going to continue to add some additional depth where I feel she needs it. And there's many times where in my shading I will use non-traditional skin color, <laughs> whatever that might mean to anyone, right? Um, by pulling in some additional color that's elsewhere in the painting just again to get that kind of harmony between where her skin stops and the rest of the picture begins and so I'll show you a little bit of that but we'll also probably repeat that as we go back to our main lesson now I'm just I think I need a little more depth here so I'm going to just use my neutral gray and trying to pay attention and keep notice where I might have some dramatic lines clearing out my brush just with water softening it
And so obviously I'm saying that my light source is coming this way because we have this side of her face more dramatically shadowed than this side, and that's fine. But you don't want it to necessarily look like a yin and yang sign <laughs> where one side is dramatically lighter than the other, unless that's the look you're going for, right? Because that that is a that is a statement and a style too. So I'm just going to bring in some additional depth up here. Again, I got my line. I'm going to mellow it out a bit. And because I don't want to run water down here again, I already did that, I'm just going to take my paper towel and I'm going to blot it. You can kind of see when you look back the things that are going to distract you later as you look at your work once it's completed. You want to try and be able to affect those distractions while everything is still wet. Again, blot where you don't want a dramatic line or demarcation. Kind of like blending your own foundation when you're putting makeup on. You do want a little bit more depth in here. And along her lash line. And this is what I mean just by pulling. I, I did obviously a variety of different colors in those roses. I've got some yellows, I've got some of that green gold, and I might just put a little bit of that in the shading as well. So I have some of that green gold. See how I have some of her, <laughs> sounds good, sounds funny, some of her face starting to creep into her hair. I can just either leave it because I'm going to paint the hair so that will just cause shadow, but if for whatever reason, I've not yet decided what color I'm going to paint her hair. I may want to mellow that out a little bit so that it's um, it's more of a shadow versus more of a, oh, look at her face tried to um, hide in her hair. And so I just wet it, and now I'm just taking my paper towel and blotting it. So this is, again, um, Again, this is not the most expensive paper, but it's also not the least expensive paper. And this is really where that comes into play as a benefit to you. Um, the way that watercolor plays, uh, it plays nicer, um, quite frankly. The way watercolor plays on higher quality paper, it just gives you more of an opportunity to manipulate the watercolor versus, um, and I have very inexpensive paper as well that I like to play and practice on, um, but it's not as enjoyable because you're kind of limited to what the paper is going to allow. Um, and sometimes, you know, it will grab, it will grab the color more dramatically than you wanted it to, or it will absorb the color a lot more quickly than you wanted it to. And it limits your ability then um, to layer and so it kind of it makes it sometimes a little bit more frustrating than it needs to be so it's one reason why I'm a proponent of good paper ah, it doesn't have to be the best but not the cheapest either you deserve it and there's lots of paper don't worry about using it use it like you could China right okay so I am going to say I'm okay with our shading and our shadowing here. I may go in, you know, it's never really completely done, right? Um, I may go in, in fact, I'm gonna do it right now, <laughs> with a really, a much smaller brush to be able to get some of the shading under her nose, along the ball of her nose, feathering it towards the eye to try and give some contour. Um, we're going to do her cheeks and then we're going to go back over to our main lesson but this is this is not necessarily done right it, it we will continue to play just as we will when we go back to the main lesson angel um but i am going to try it's kind of i'm 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 going to contradict myself here in my actions in a minute i'm going to um put the heat gun on her face a little bit because i do have you can kind of i think you can see that i do have a lot of water right now in this paper because of the number of layers that i have done um, in shading her face and so i'm going to flatten it out a little bit and then i'm actually going to add more water before i drop her cheeks in just because i don't want because i'm not going to dry it bone dry and um i want to be able to get movement and some subtlety in the color i'm going to place in her cheeks
because again it allows me to have more flexibility with what I'm able to do with her color but at the same time even though I just dried this I am going to apply a very light layer of water here so that when I place some cheek color it it goes in a little bit more subtle that it doesn't grab or it doesn't um, it doesn't become flexible so that I can make the choice once I have the color on there with what I want to do with it. Um, I also do think though that um, there is a lot of charm in doing the cheeks extremely dramatic and and not um, feathering them in that much and allowing them just to kind of be at a high blush. It kind of makes you wonder what um, what just happened to her. But I am I'm I'm not gonna I'm, I filled my brush with water, but I'm taking a little bit of that out. And I'm going to just very lightly go over my cheeks. Again, wherever you've got water, you're inviting the watercolor to play. Because of the color scheme that I've got going on here, I am going to pull a little bit of an orangey red, which is um, really kind of this color and this color. I'm going to pull a little bit of orangey red, but I'm also going to use that same mixture that I used on her face and um, to shade her face, those browns and that neutral tint, so that it is not um, it is not too dramatic. Again, if, if that's the look you're going for, um, which again I think is really charming, you absolutely can do that. But I'm gonna start out soft, and then I can layer, like anything else, I can layer the color in. And I can drop the color in, and so that's too soft for me, right? So I am going to get a little bit more brave and drop a little bit more color. Now you can see that there's a distinct line where her cheek is. I'm going to feather that out a little bit. It is going to cause her cheek color to begin to shift and move a little bit. Um, but I don't want that demarcation line of clearly where I dropped her cheek color in versus where I painted her face. And so you can see I've, I've kind of toned that down. And then I can go back in and I can continue to drop. And because this area now is a little bit more wet, you're not gonna get that dramatic. But I can, can just continue to tap the color in until it's the density, until it's the intensity that I'd like, that I would want. And again, you can pull some of that blush color up under her brow. You can pull it down the center of her neck, just to bring, just again to make, to make the overall painting a little bit more cohesive. And so now I'm out of that color, so I need to mix that color again. I'm taking the orangey, it's not really orangey red, it's just a little bit of a warmer red versus a cooler red. Now this area is already dry since I played so long on that side, so I'm gonna, I didn't wash my brush at all completely, but I'm gonna re-wet it. I'm going to begin to drop my blush color in to the intensity that I like. I might want to add a little bit more up here. And then I'm washing up my brush and again just feathering out these lines so it's not just complete obvious. Again, it causes the blush to travel but it's okay because I'm going back in and dropping the intensity on the apple of her cheek. So even though some of my blush may have creeped in other areas, um, the intensity is where, the intensity, the most majority of the saturation of the color is where I want it to be. And then it kind of just fades amongst um, the balance of her face, which is more than okay. I also will take, I have a little bit of this color left. So I will begin, we're not gonna do her lips here because we're gonna do the lips on our angel in our main lesson, but I will, um, while it's wet and while I have it, I will drop a little bit of that color in here. I probably will make her lips a little bit more dramatic, but that way, again, there's some cohesiveness between what's going on in her cheek and then um, underlying also in her lip. And again, you can, if you have a little bit more, which I do, you can blend that in to other areas of her face. If that causes you to lose a little bit of the intensity that you liked, again, just go in with your neutral shade and continue to layer until you're at a point where you feel really good about what it is that you see. 
right? So we are going to transition now back to our main lesson. So we will reintroduce the angel that we've um, been playing with the majority of the time here. But again, I wanted to go back over um, what unfortunately my error, I did not get on tape so that you could see um, how I shaded her because you'll see her in a minute and she is shaded. So I will see you in a second. <laughs> 